Hi, welcome to my channel, Reader Woman. My name's Judy, and let's talk book tags. I was really excited to see there's a new one running around, BookTube, called the I Love the Book, I Love the Movie Tag. <laughs> I had a lot of fun thinking about some of my favorite movies. Now, granted, I'm, I'm a huge movie lover, so these are not even close to all of them. However, for thinking about it for a few hours, these are what I came up with. And let's see here, how do I wanna start? Well, we'll just start with number one. <laughs> one of my all-time favorite movies is Pygmalion. Uh, the 1938 edition um, that starred uh, Leslie Howard and Wendy Hiller. And um, it really is one of my favorite movies, almost of all time. Um, written by George Bernard Shaw, uh, directed, I found out, by Leslie Howard and Anthony uh, Asquith. So um, I thought that was interesting. You know, I had only known Leslie Howard through Gone with the Wind. And so I think that's what I love. <laughs> I loved at first about this movie because it gave me a different vision of who Leslie Howard was as an actor. Far more than Ashley Brooke. Boo, Ashley, Ashley Wilkes. Um, so uh, I, I just always eat this one up. <laughs> Number two, of course, would be Pride and Prejudice, written by Jane Austen. Now, um, there are many good versions to choose from. My favorite has to be, though, the 1995 BBC miniseries, and that starred uh, Jennifer Ely and Colin Firth. Now, of course, everybody loves Colin Firth as Mr. Darcy, but I thought that Jennifer Ely was brilliant as Lizzie. I think Lizzie can come across as, if not, if not played correctly, you can lose the sweetness and just hear the tartness and judgments, <laughs> judgmental voice that she sometimes has. And um, I thought that Jennifer Ely caught that sweetness as well as the pertness. And, uh, and that will always be my, to me, the perfect uh, Pride and Prejudice. Now granted, um, <laughs> I am, um, I saw that Steve Donahue had mentioned this one, but Bright's Head Revisited um, from 1981. I can remember I had, I moved up to Bellingham in 1980. And at the time, um, you could get Canadian stations. And the Canadian stations were playing this amazing mini series from Grenada, the TV, uh, uh, oh, TV production company. Um, and starring Jeremy Irons. I'd never seen Jeremy Irons before. I wasn't totally enthralled with him for whatever reason. But the beauty, the beauty of the estate, I believe that it was shot at Chatsworth. Um, the beauty of Venice. The luxury, the wit and and the the glimpse of youth <laughs> that fleeting glimpse of youth at its most spectacular um i had read evelyn waugh before that but um but yeah i and the book is also amazing in a very different way and uh, anyways, I, I, I love that version. And um, I've seen it a couple of times. Then uh, 
uh, for number four, I don't say it's the best, but we're so rejuvenating. Um, much Ado About Nothing. There's been a lot of versions of this, and my favorite was the Joss Whedon one from 2012, starring Amy Acker and Alexis Denisoff. It was playful, it was joyful, it, was, it wasn't necessarily a reinvention, but it was just a joy in both watching and you could tell in the production of them doing it that they just had fun with it. And I think that is exciting, very exciting. Number five, <clears throat> now I am a fan of Harry Potter. My nieces came of age, and for my eldest niece, uh, I tried to hold both the movies and the books as kind of uh, uh, incentives for her to read more. I can't say it did. <laughs> it did a huge amount for that, but, um, but we always were going to the movies and seeing the latest Harry Potter. Um, we didn't wait in line for the book, but I most certainly bought one or two the next day. <laughs> so with that being said, the movie that I remember the most is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, I didn't do enough research, so I don't remember the director for the first two, but they were children's movies. And suddenly, um, Alfonso... I'm going to butcher his name, and I'm very sorry about that. Cuaron took this on. And suddenly you had a darker, more mysterious, scarier um, Hogwarts. You had, it just, he amped the level. I thought it was too bad they didn't keep him. Um, I know that the director who did, I think, all the rest of the movies, or at least the last three was very good too but this particular one pivoted it and it needed pivoting and and I think that it was very well done and uh and for that series it just always stood out for me then I was thinking about it I was thinking about Jane Eyre I don't know that I've really seen a version that I love. So I decided not to put that on my list. And then I thought about Little Women. Now Greta Gerwig is coming out with um, a new version and I'm very excited to go see that. Um, <clears throat> she has <gasps> um, Saoirse Ronan as Joe. Uh, Emma Watson as um, oh as Meg, and um, Amy is going to be played by Florence Pugh, who I think is an amazing up and coming actress. So I'm very much looking forward to this production. Um, but I started thinking about which one was my favorite, and of course there was the Great Ninety Three. But I had to go back in time. I loved Katherine Hepburn as Jo. It just felt like a role that she was meant to play. So um, this was directed by George Cooker, and I thought it was really great. So, um, and but it was primarily because of Katherine Hepburn. Just a sideline. <laughs> Growing up, when I wasn't reading, um, on Saturdays, instead of watching cartoons, I, I grew up um, about 30 miles out of L.A. And all of the, you know, like Channel 11, Channel 12, the non-network uh, TV places, TV uh, networks down there, would show old movies. So they would show old movies, primarily from the 30s and 40s, and sometimes from the 50s. And I had, 
you know, so I saw Pygmalion on TV. Um, and it was great. I loved getting to see all these old movies. I still love the old movies, but um, I don't really like, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, oh, you know, movie classics and all of that, Turner classics. It's, I don't know, for some reason I don't enjoy watching that. So, anyways. Then number seven, which could be considered a bit controversial, Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. I read the book after seeing the movie and it, they were such different experiences. Um, the directors were Tom uh, uh, Tykwer and Lana and Lily Watch Wachkowski's, Wachkowski's uh, siblings, um, and starring uh, Tom Hanks and Halle Berry. Um, the movie was a force of nature. Almost impossible to keep up with, but once you started getting into the rhythm, the changing, the variance, um, wonderful. The book. It was one of our choices for our book club. I was the only one who ended up reading it. And I have to say, getting through that first chapter or two was very, very difficult. But once I did, it became amazing. And I'm very grateful I've read it. And I keep meaning to put uh, more of his books on my TBR. So I think I probably will next year. Number eight. Sea Biscuit uh, by Laura Hillenbrand. This is one of those movies uh, starring Jeff Bridges, uh, Toby Maguire, and Chris Cooper that I actually um, saw obsessively over and over and over again. And I've read the book a couple of times. My parents were children during the Great Depression. And so seeing the Great Depression so intimately as you do in the movie, it just, it, it, it really, you know, gives you a sense of how hard and how painful life was for the poor masses. And um, so, yeah, uh, this uh, 2003 movie directed by uh, Gary Ross, who from Seabiscuit I thought was director supreme, um, only to really disappoint me as a director, uh, with The Hunger Games. The, he directed the first one, which I didn't think was that good. Um, but Seabiscuit, he had that down to a T. Anyways, one, one of those uh, great books and movie combos. My next one, I'm sure, is on everybody's list, Lord of the Rings uh, by J.R.R. Tolkien. You have to understand, I came to the movies first. As a kid, I tried to read The Hobbit over and over and over. I must have checked it out three or four times, and it just bored the hell out of me. Hobbits and dwarves and... Wizards, it's like, yeah, whatever. It wasn't in my genre at that point. <laughs> I really wasn't a great sci-fi, you know, that just wasn't me at that point, uh, fantasy. Um, but having seen the movies, which I have to say, Peter Jackson did an amazing job. I know he is better as a director than what you would think after Lord of the Rings, but um, hopefully he will find a project yet again that will showcase what he can do. Um, it was an amazing combination. I, after seeing the first movie, I of course went immediately went and got the books and started reading them. And um, kind of fell in love with them. Although I have to say, it also shows its age. It just, you know, 
there's not enough female fighter uh, characters. I know that there is more in the Cimmerillion and other works by him, but I haven't gotten into those. <laughs> I guess with Tolkien, I have to see before I read. And then number 10, perhaps a hair controversial, <laughs> A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. 1971 was when the movie came out, uh, directed by Stanley Kubrick. I did see the movie first before reading the book. Um, it happened to be showing at a college where I was going and a friend and I went to like a midnight showing. And I've seen the movie a few times. Brilliant, just absolutely brilliant. That combination between um, violence and the wordplay, which you hear, which I thought Anthony Burgess did a wonderful job with um, writing it. Because normally when people go to like Esperanto, Esperanto, you know, where your commonality on uh, languages, so it's a mix of everything, it wasn't usually English and Russian. And, uh, and I liked it, <laughs> I really did. Of course, I was taking Russian at the time, um, but yeah, Stanley Kubrick's movie is a masterpiece. Um, Malcolm McDowell, an amazing role, and, um, and a great book. So I hope if you have any love of movies and books, you will uh, make your own list, because consider yourself tagged. Take care, bye.